Saturn's rings, the crown jewels of the solar system, spanning almost 175,000 miles. But a closer look reveals that they're extremely delicate, in most places only 32 feet thick. Inside them, ice, billions of particles, from superfine frozen dust to huge chunks the size of icebergs. Between the rings are strange gaps where moons feast on ice. This incredible structure seems perfect and eternal, but appearances can be deceiving. Scientists used to think the rings were as old as Saturn itself. But when a space probe called Cassini visits Saturn, it reveals an uncomfortable truth. Saturn's rings are far too clean. The rings of Saturn are so bright and beautiful because they're made of trillions of particles of pristine ice. The ice itself is actually not very dirty. It's very, very reflective. You almost have this beautiful mirror around Saturn. And if the rings are old, why are they still so clean? Nicholas Altobelli is trying to unravel this mystery. If the rings are clean, could that be because there isn't much dirt around Saturn? Nicholas is trying to find out how much dirt falls onto Saturn's rings. Dirt in space is known as cosmic dust. And Nicholas measures cosmic dust with an instrument that's kept under lock and key in a hyperclean lab in the University of Stuttgart. This is our cosmic dust analyzer instrument. It's a perfect replica of the cosmic dust analyzer on the Cassini space probe. This instrument is made to detect dust particles, small grains of matter, which are as tiny as a human hair, up to maybe a few times the size of a grain of sand. Cassini's cosmic dust analyzer measures the dust streaming into the Saturnian system over 13 years. Nicholas analyzes the results, and what he finds is staggering. Not only is cosmic dust definitely falling onto the rings, it's doing it 10 times faster than anybody thought. After measuring the true abundance of the dust, far away from Saturn, we are able to derive a 10 times higher flux at the rings than previously expected. But if so much dust has been pulled into them over the years, how are they so bright and clean? If the rings formed with Saturn four and a half billion years ago, they should be much darker. The inescapable conclusion is that the rings are young, seriously young. From our data, the rings are hundreds or a few hundreds millions of years. It's well possible that the dinosaurs could have witnessed the formation of the rings. 100 million years is phenomenally young. Saturn is 4.5 billion years old. If Nicholas is right, Saturn has only had rings for a fraction of its life. We think of the planets as having been around for 100% of the time of the solar system. Well, Saturn's rings, they've only been around for the last 2% of the solar system's age. So they're very new. But if the rings are so young, how did they form? They're made of billions of tiny particles like shrapnel from some violent event. But what violent event, and why and when did it happen? At the University of Arizona, physicist Eric Asfog uses computer simulations to investigate what this event was. He believes clues can be found in the moons that surround Saturn today. The Saturn system is unique of all the planetary systems. Go beyond the rings and you get these middle-sized icy moons. And then suddenly you have the giant moon Titan. 
Saturn has a vast number of moons, 62. They're all fairly small, except one, Titan, that's huge. If you were to put all 61 of Saturn's other moons together, they'd still be smaller than Titan. And for theorists like Eric, that seems odd. How did Saturn get one massive moon and a whole series of smaller ones? One of the ideas that I've put forward is that it got to be that way through a series of collisions. And what we're looking at now are the byproducts of a series of collisions that formed Titan and it grew collision by collision, spinning off all these fragments. And that set up a messy, complex system that leads to ring formation almost as a cascade of events. The early solar system was an unstable place and very different than it is today. The planets were in different changing orbits, and Saturn had only a handful of moons. Could those moons have collided and formed huge Titan and Saturn's other smaller moons? So what you're looking at here is one of our simulations, which has a icy moon and another icy moon. And so here we go. And these two satellites will merge, and it's a real mess because they don't merge right away. They bounce, and then they bounce with a little bit less energy, and they keep spinning up. So when all is said and done, you form Titan. It's uh, an icy, rocky body, and you end up with a whole forest of new moons of Saturn. Eric's simulation shows that the violence of Titan's birth spawned many other much smaller moons. And the behavior of these small moons holds the key to how Saturn's rings form. The moons pull on each other. They cross each other's paths until billions of years later, two of them get too close. They spiral together and collide ejecting vast streams of icy material. Saturn's gravity grabs the shattered moon fragments and pulls them towards the planet. Trapped in orbit, the icy shrapnel spreads into a thick halo. Over time, colliding particles flatten the halo into a delicate disk eventually forming the rings that we see today. When we look at Saturn's rings from Earth, they look fairly static. They're just the way they are. Now that we've seen them up close, we see it's an incredibly dynamic system evolving all the time. A series of cataclysmic events created the rings that we see today. But what if the formation of the rings isn't the final link in this chain of violent events. One of the amazing things is we think this might be something of a cycle. Maybe over time the rings will actually congeal and form moons again. Maybe Saturn's been doing this for quite a while. Are Saturn's bright shining rings destined to die? Scientists scramble to find answers. Does an ice-guzzling moon in the outer edges of the rings hint at their ultimate fate? Or have the world's most powerful telescopes already witnessed the beginning of a very different end? <laughs>